Hi everyone, welcome to another learning episode. Today, I'll be sharing some sample qualitative research titles. In my last video, I did share five sample quantitative research titles that you can all get an idea from. We already know the difference of these two types of research. With quantitative research titles, the results or the data gathered and it can be interpreted by the use of statistical tools and through numerical value. However, with qualitative research, it investigates a certain phenomena unique to a certain individual to, or to a group of people. So all the results will be gathered and it can be interpreted through written or word analysis. With quantitative research, you gauge, you assess, you evaluate quantifiable data. However, with qualitative research, the main methods are interviews and focus group discussions because you have to gather your conversation partners and then you have to dig into their stories, their lives, or their experiences. And you compare these narratives form certain themes. Just a little disclaimer before I proceed to sharing the five sample qualitative research to all of you. I am no way saying that I am a research expert. I do not have a major degree in research. However, I already finished my master's degree and I had few opportunities every now and then in crafting quantitative and qualitative researches. So I gain a lot of knowledge and I'm creating this video to help my students and other students as well to realize that research subject is such a fulfilling subject and we can gain a lot of knowledge and information out from doing researches. And now let's proceed to our first research title, which is The Lived Experiences of COVID-19 Survivors. This type of qualitative research specifically is phenomenological research design since it talks about the lived experiences of the conversation partners. Everybody experienced the discomfort brought by the COVID-19 pandemic and is still like taking a toll in our everyday lives. And I believe it is a significant study because Though a lot of us experience the discomfort brought by the pandemic since it is a global issue, but not all of us were or are infected by the COVID-19 virus. And I want to look into the stories of these individuals who were confined and isolated in the hospitals, how they battle with the illness and how they were able to cope mentally and emotionally trying to survive each day in the isolation room. After you decide, after you decide that this is the specific topic that you really want to study on, then that's the time you proceed to determining your inclusion criteria. When we talk about inclusion criteria, these are the qualities or these are the standards that your conversation partner should meet in order for them to be qualified as one of your participants in the study. So in this case, we all know that from the title itself, we already have an idea who will be our possible conversation partners. So basically, these are the COVID-19 survivors. But then again, we still have to set specific standards for it because we cannot get all the COVID-19 survivors here in the Philippines. So one specific criteria that we can get is that he or she must be really confined in a certain hospital so um, the person must be cl clinically or medically diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, COVID and he or she has been brought to the hospital for medical treatment. The second one would be the category of age. You have to classify what specific age category would be your conversation partner. So for me it could be good if we choose 40 to 60 year old individuals since most of these individuals who categorically belong in this age bracket already have comorbidities or other illnesses prior to being infected with COVID-19 virus. And then the third category would be he or she could be single or married as long as he or she is the one who provides the basic needs to the family or he or she is the breadwinner because basically there's a lot of pressure for them. So what if during that time he or she was slowly losing hope? What were the thoughts they had in mind during that time when they were treated? After setting the criteria, that's the time you choose what interview type are you going to employ. Once you are interviewing your conversation partners, this can be a structured interview, unstructured interview, or semi-structured interview. I suggest that you use semi-structured interview because it's 
a perfect balance between structured and slightly loose way of interviewing a person because you still need to set interview guide questions. I mean, you have to prepare 10 or 20 interview guide questions so that at least you could have a guide and these questions are related to, to your overarching question or objective and then but then again, it doesn't restrict you to these 10 or 20 questions. You still can ask impromptu questions if there are topics or concepts that you would like to clarify with some structured type of interview that could be possible. So during the course of your interview, it is very important to have an, a positive or an open environment to everyone so they could speak about their minds, they could share their struggles, their challenges, and how they were able to cope with all the negative feelings that they were feeling at that time. And now let's proceed to the second research title, which is Success Stories of Overseas Filipino Workers. Now it's a typical rags to riches stories of these OFW workers who came from indigent families or low income generating families here in the Philippines and how they strive to alleviate their financial situations and now become successful in their own fields. So same thing if you are already fixated to this title, that the next thing that you will do is to set your inclusion criteria. So one good inclusion criteria that we have is first, these over six Filipino workers must be coming from indigent Filipino families or low income generating families. Second, they went abroad as domestic helpers or laborers, not professional workers. And the third category is their net income now that they are already successful in their field should be annually should be half a million, a minimum of half a million or more than a million. After that, that's the time you ask for permission. You should write a letter and informed consent telling them the nature or the purpose of your study, why you are conducting it. And then after getting their permissions, and that's the time you set the date and the, the place where your interviews will take. And during the interview, let them narrate their experiences, their struggles, the challenges, and how they were able to rise above these challenges and then take perseverance and now become successful. Compile all these stories, compile their narratives, and then formulate common essences and common themes why they were able to rise above their struggles and their financial incapability. Now we are down to our third research title, which is How K-pop Industry Saves Lives. Well, since I'm a teacher, I'm always interacting with teenagers and Generation Z students. So they always ask me about BTS and Blackpink and other K-pop groups. I was, con I was curious and then I tried searching about them. And I, I really wanted to understand the hype. While like scrolling some videos about K-pop industry, I did try watching some of the documentary films where there were teenagers who were suffering with physical illnesses, cancer in particular, that the only way they could escape from all the pain and the medical treatments that they had to go through was watching K-pop videos and they began to like smile or feel happy within themselves watching the scape up idols so i really want to study on this topic since i believe there are a lot of teenagers right now who are suffering with physical and mental illnesses like uh, with mental illnesses we have anxiety and depression and how they were able to cope with this illnesses through watching k-pop entertainment shows or their k-pop idols perform on tv or on screen with setting an inclusion criteria, first thing that we have to establish is our conversation partner must be clinically or medically diagnosed with a certain physical or mental illness. And then the next criteria would be the age category. So specifically, uh, these conversation partners must be, must be teenagers. So they should be 13 to 17 years old. After, after setting the inclusion criteria, then that's the time we proceed to our interview guide questions. Like prepare 10, 5 or 15 questions, set of questions that you would like to ask to these young individuals, how they were able to cope with the illnesses that they have and then how the K-pop idols or the K-pop industry gave them hope, gave them inspiration to go through life, even if they are battling something. So if 
we could actually dig into their lives and then try to check how the K-pop industry provide them entertainment and joy despite of having going through something. Maria realize natin, especially those people who are judging K-pop fanatics, na entertainment is actually part of our lives and it's really important for people to have entertainment at least they could get source of joy despite the pain and the suffering they're going through and now let's proceed to our fourth title which is the struggles of being teen parents well we all know that this is one of the problems that we have right now since a lot of students are not really responsible in terms of engaging into sexual activities and they resort to building young family in which parents, both parents, are not yet ready to build and then provide for their children. And after that, it would result to poverty and then the cycle never ends. I like this qualitative research because it would open a lot of realities and the dark sides of like getting into something you're not ready yet. And the next part is we have to set inclusion criteria just like what we did with the other three researches. So first, they should be teens. Both parents should be teens. Second, uh, they come from low-income generating families. And then third, they are still studying. And then during the interview, it's better that you could use their vernacular language in terms of asking them questions so that you could ra really saturate the data when we talk about saturating data, meaning they could really respond well to the questions. They could pour out every experiences and situations that they want to share to you. And it is very important that the researcher establishes trust with the conversation partner. So the conversation partners will not be ashamed or shy to tell his or her stories. We are down to our last research title, which is, Is the World Ending? A Qualitative Analysis of Generation Z's Perception on Doomsday. We all know that there are different types of intelligences and one of the neglected intelligences is existentialism. And I would like to venture on that by asking this one specific question to our young generation students, which is, is the world ending? And what are their knowledge or their concept about doomsday? And what are their feelings about it? Are they afraid? Or they, do they have the concept of life after death or anything like that? By asking this question, you can also touch on their religious beliefs, their life philosophy, their traditions and the non-negotiables they have or the values that they have as young individuals and that's it these are the five qualitative research titles i'm sharing to all of you i hope you get inspiration or at least one concept that you are interested so hope you have learned a thing or two from this video discussion thank you so much for watching keep on learning